Hiya. Okay, let me check this is working. Yes. Okay, so happy Monday, moon day, everyone. You know what, let us move back just a little bit. <laughs> Hi, if you're just tuning into the live chat. Um, hope you're keeping well and hope you have a nice cup of tea, coffee, something warm, something comforting. Alrighty, because this is another episode of Hawaii Hermes. And we're going to therefore be talking about Hermes Mercury. Uh, my name is Hini, if you are new. Hiya, Alvia, how are you doing? My name is Hini, if you're new. Um, and if you're new and you like what I do, then please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, it will really help me. And if you like the video, this stream, give it a thumbs up as well. Alrighty. Um, I am an astrologer and tower reader. Okay, so welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a hinster. Thank you for tuning in. So we're going to have a quick little catch up on Hermes. And it wasn't until too long ago that we had a Hoei Hermes, right? We talked about the retrograde, yeah, in um, Scorpio and then Libra. We had that retrograde, retrograde ended, and now Hermes is in the latter degrees, the things like 26, getting into 27 degrees of Libra, cardinal air sign. And it's going to very soon then get into Scorpio. Ooh, ooh, tasty vegan food. Ooh, I've just got tea here, sleepy tea. Mm. Trying to like constantly detox in this Scorpio season. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, but yes, Hermes is going to enter Scorpio officially from November 11th of this year. And it will stay there, be there, traveling through the fixed water sign of Scorpio, the ice sign, the subversive fire sign, Mars lead sign of Scorpio, until December 2nd, 2020. So pretty much all of this month, okay? And then a tiny bit of 2020. And I also want to mention that here in the UK, apparently this lockdown, this official lockdown is going to end on December 2nd, I think. If that happens, then that'll be an interesting sort of date or moment to watch because Mercury will be hopping on into Sagittarius. So you might see like a burst of stupidity again here in the UK <laughs> where everyone just forgets their masks and, and wants to go to the pub in huge throngs and then we start all over again so that could happen once Mercury <laughs> hits Sag. Um, keep that in mind. Alrighty so mm, yeah yeah off the caffeine mm -hmm. I'm trying to get off the caffeine as well but that is kind of hard you know it's kind of hard, but I think like I'm doing like maximum two, three cups a day, which is not terrible, um, but I can do better. <laughs> anyway, so Hermes hopping on over into the sign of Libra. What do we get then? So, sorry, into the sign of Scorpio. So we've had Mercury in Libra out of the retrograde, right? And, and starting to think, help us think in a more Libran way. So in a more balanced way, it is often said, in a more relational way, in a more harmonious way, but in Scorpio season, right? So it's always been allied with the sun moving through Scorpio. So this constant illumination of truths. Thank you, I'm glad you like it, yeah. Do you like the inside of my jacket as well? <laughs> I have Leo in my first house, okay, and Jupiter's there. I love this little jacket. Um, but, um, yeah, so this, you know, Mercury, even though it's been in Libra, Mercury has been sort of mixing with the sun through Scorpio. Hi, Evan, how are you doing? Nice to see you here. Thank you very much. Ooh, all the Geminis are coming in. I love it. <laughs> um, I have a lot of Gemini friends and subscribers and clients, like a lot. Gemini is like, you know, my sister, right? I'm Virgo, so sister signs. Um, but yes, so Scorpio, the sun moving through Scorpio has been mixing with this 
um, Hermes in Libra energy and we've had this illumination, constant illumination of the truth and of the deep raw feelings and especially when Mercury was retrograde we were returning some of us to the, the sticky emotions of bonds whether that's like love bonds, romance bonds, obsessive bonds with others, you know, friend bonds, or bonds to things and concepts of the past that s made us stuck, you know, <laughs> for a little bit and really reflecting. And some of us have chosen now to return to those bonds and those relationships or to give relationships another go, a marriage another go, a relationship another go, uh, suggests another date with that person and all that jazz. But if it's not people, then people chose to go back to something they previously sort of emotionally, passionately obsessed over that was actually good for them. It was a good thing to attach to and that they returned to it or they were returning to it. So, you know, the Mercury retrograde has been good for some people uh, and not so good for others, right? Because it did mean for some the return of exes, the return of uh, toxic sort of hookups, the return of... Um, poor obsessive tendencies and poor passions that continue to trap you in that stickiness, right? But now we're talking about Mercury direct in Scorpio. Mm, and this first thing I noted down for us to keep in mind is that this is all about love and romantic thoughts. So remember, Hermes is just hopping out of the air into water, out of Libra into Scorpio. So the love and the romantic thoughts get more intense they get much more intense from the 11th officially but possibly even now you're feeling it especially if you're mercurial if you have a lot of mercury if you're mercury ruled if you're like a gemini or a virgo rising especially or mercury rising oh my god you're already feeling it so thought these lovey-dovey romantic thoughts get very very intense scorpio season is the Björk season Anyone here like Björk? If you're a follower of my channel, you know I love, love, love her. But it's the season of her and her music and her genius and all of the scorpionic power and emotion and passion and obsession that she injects into her work and has put out there for years, right? And that vibrates through us. <laughs> um, very intense. But also bonds in general are going to start to tighten because we're gonna be interacting more with these bonds. So any bonds that you've made with someone, with something, there's a tightening happening and more interaction, more activity, more play. And also, um, what did I write here? <laughs> I can't read my own writing right now. Oh yeah, couple, that's why I wrote a word that doesn't exist. I made up a word, couple okay <laughs> so anything to do with like couples if you're in a couple if you're dreaming of being in a couple um if you were part of a couple the coupley communications really do intensify when mercury is in scorpio because it's mercury hermes communications messages okay selling bartering all that jazz and it's um scorpio intensity and especially some of us are still lingering in the retrograde energies of, oh my gosh, that ex or that hookup or that person, that this, and the intensity is there, but it's getting even more coupley. I'm really wanting, our minds really want to fasten to them or to that um, and to make it more intense and even real, to realize it and to go very deep with it all. And especially in our heads, because it's Mercury. And the other thing, the next thing I want to uh, mention is that this is bringing dating, mm -hmm, dating and flirting and playing back onto the scene. But of course, it's bringing the seriousness of all of that with the dating, with the flirting, with the playing. You know, when Mercury was in Libra, it was a little bit more superficial, a little bit more, let's play a lot of different people let's shop around kind of thing, you know, on Tinder, you shop around a bit, um, some of you, um, but now we get a bit more serious, even if we're still dating or flirting or playing, there's a certain element of seriousness creeping in, and it can be really weird, so be careful, 
because Scorpio energy can kind of bring you uh, the creepy and the weird. And especially once we get into Sagittarius season, this is when like wishes, romantic wishes, especially that you've been kind of seeding in Libra season, Sag season can really be like, whoa, here it is right here. Lucky me or not lucky me, but it's come true. <laughs> that thing, that romance. Um, and also I think a lot of us are going to get back, back to emotional and intense mindsets. So keep that in mind as well. We're putting a lot more of our emotions um, and our intense mentality, our intense mental focus into things, into people. So it's great if you're working on a new project, a new collaboration, or a new commitment to yourself, because it's mentally about to get more intense and more fixated. So it's great in Libra and early Scorpio season if you made some really nice intentions maybe even around the full moon in Taurus that we had, if you made some nice intentions to let go, to release something, more fixation and more motivation and more ease is coming because you're just injecting more of the um, intensity and the emotion into it, but now it's very mental. So you're seeing a lot more of the logic of that decision, that intention that you made. Also the communication of secrets, and truths is going to be very big with Mercury and Scorpio. Very big. Um, again, it can be weird, so be careful. It might not be what you intended, but the truth comes out anyway. And that's another big thing. The truth comes out when Mercury moves through Scorpio. And this could be for the good, the bad, or the ugly, but just get ready. It can even be things that you see or you read or you hear in secret, and, and some truth comes to you just by seeing it. And Mercury also deals with serendipity. <laughs> it does. Mercury deals with messages, synchronicities of the everyday, the mundane. But through those synchronicities, you might find that you uh, learn of some truth. Um, also, by the way, if you're interested more intricately in what's going on in November, the November astrology, you can check out my November 2020 astrology video that I did earlier. Um, in the month. Uh, do check that out if you haven't already. I go day by day with the astrology, okay? Um, and so that's if you're interested in the specific transits or maybe you're thinking about what might be a good day to do this or not a great day to do that. Check it out. Um, and also, I have something else to mention. I mentioned in my last video, but I mentioned it wrong. I said alien cre creations. It's actually my friend inspiring alien creations okay and we are gonna collaborate very soon on something very very special which is coming okay so i want you to go on over to inspiring alien creations channel and go and support him okay go like and subscribe and get ready for something really special that's coming okay it's going to involve astrology it's going to involve spirituality it's going to involve a lot of different topics that you might be interested in and I love him. I love what he does. I love his art. I love his work. Okay, so please go and check him out if you haven't already and um, brace yourself for some funky mercurial business. Alrighty. The next thing I want to mention with this Mercury moving through Scorpio, transit Hermes, getting Scorpionic, getting intense, okay, getting deep and sometimes a bit weird, is that your deepest, truest, and most intense, intense is a word we're going to use a lot, okay, but your deepest cores and your deepest feelings are being exposed with Hermes. Hermes is bringing it out through your words, through your poetry, through your song lyrics, through your writing, through your prose, your emails, your messages even. Mercury is bringing out these deep cores in all of us, and like that can involve just how we truly deeply feel about people, about ourselves, about issues, about politics, about everything. It all is being more shown uh, because Hermes wants you to communicate your deep, deepest authenticity, your, your truest self, your most hidden and private self sometimes. 
Um, so, you know, don't be surprised if some famous people come out in some sense during the Mercury in Scorpio transit, or don't be surprised if you have a conversation with someone who you know, family, friend, partner, um, who is coming out, or you're doing this coming out. Um, because Mer Hermes just wants to communicate these deep truths, these pure truths in the cores of us. And even if you're not communicating it, these cores, these uh, deep feelings and truths of ours are coming to our mind's surface, at least. And they're coming to the mind's surface very, very clearly. Clarity is a huge Scorpio season thing, but very clearly coming to the forefront of your mind, of your logic, of your plans in, in the head even, right? Your plans. And that's quite, a, it can be really beautiful for us, for us to go through that. Um, so just embrace it. Embrace the authentic energies of your deepest, truest self and don't be afraid of it. It can be very scary. It can be um, very, um, it can feel like you're breaking out of the last remnants of certain trauma or certain toxic cycles. But it definitely can also feel like you're finally ending mm, cycles of dealing with lots of turbulent, deep emotions and now finally being able to express them, to express yourself and, and, and to come out like that phoenix, like that eagle that uh, transgresses. And also, though, in a more sort of mundane sense, this Mercury moving through, <laughs> I'm glad you're feeling it, moving through Scorpio transit can give us um, a great opportunity to strategize financially because Scorpio, just like Taurus, these two ends of the same pole, they deal with things like finances, materials, resources. And so Hermes, by the way, Mercury, in traditional astrology especially, is associated with bartering and like market stuff and dealing and being clever and witty in those senses as well. So it's not just about like being funny or having an interesting story. Hermes is also very clever when it comes to, I've got this for you uh, and I, I like that from, from you. So let's make this little deal. Um, and it can be very, very quick and it can be very, very clever. And it can be very, very friendly. And because it's Scorpio season, it can be very deep. And because it's Hermes and Scorpio, you can make a lot of these clever, um, friendly bonds with others that can involve money or can involve um, shared resources or can involve like loans, even things like that. You can get more um, financially savvy and also more strategic because Scorpio is about strategy. So I have these resources like a spider. How am I going to strategize uh, for survival, future projecting survival? How am I going to strategize uh, and, and move forward? Um, so it's going to be a perfect time for those of you who have businesses, for those of you who are entrepreneurial, for those of you who just in general want to or you enjoy um, managing your finances, your savings, um, and, and your resources for income. And the final thing I want to say, just before I get off um, and let you enjoy the rest of your Monday and Moon Day, is that we, again, what did I write here? <laughs> oh God, I think, I think I'm getting very old. Um, put your something to cutting things out put your, oh, your hands, that's what I meant, okay, <laughs> freaking hell, because Mercury also deals with hands, it's a very handsy sort of part of our magical powers, for example, if you have like Mars and Gemini, you'll find a lot of people who are like interpreters, or sign language people, or people who read palms, people who um, are code breakers or they work with code, things like that, you find a lot of Mars and Gemini. Um, that's just one example, but mercurial energy is very hands-on, likes to take things apart, play with things, put them back together, likes to touch things, press buttons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so there is this naughty sort of childish side to our mercurial magic 
Um, and in Scorpio, then, Hermes wants us to put these hands to continuing this act of cutting out. Okay, and doing a bit of this. Okay, I don't need any more of that. I don't need any more of this. I don't need that person. I don't need any more of that. Let's flick them away. Let's swipe them away. Let's block them. And <laughs> Mercury is increasing this uh, activity in us. And it's for the good uh, a lot of the time because in Scorpio season, of course, we want to keep this healthy purge of um, the toxic people, purge of the toxic things. Um, so as to also, in some cases, continue this killing of your demons experience that Scorpio season is, right? You know, I've mentioned before, Libra season and Scorpio season is where we do get, it's a part of the year where we get introduced to, here's your demons, what are you going to do about them before you get to Sag season and, and beyond? <laughs> um, and so now that we're well into Scorpio season, and Hermes is about to enter, it's like, let's just get more active about this cutting out and let's get more communicative. So you can do it a lot in the digital senses, right? Or you can get more, um, especially, oh my God, once Venus hits Scorpio, which is gonna happen a bit later, oh my gosh, we're gonna talk about a lot of Scorpio energy. I can't wait to talk about Venus entering Scorpio. It's gonna, oh, it's gonna be brilliant. But <laughs> especially when Venus joins Mercury, okay, in Scorpio, it's going to be like a lot of the focus on let's just be true and honest about, you know, I'm going to have to cut you loose or cut this contract dead in the water if um, it's not going to get us anywhere anymore. Okay, that's kind of a lot of what you're going to be doing <laughs> um, this year. Um, and, and embrace it because I know it can be painful for some of us. It can be like awkward, embarrassing, but it's true and it's deep. And at the end of the day, do you want to stay stuck? Because, you know, Mercury retrograde and Scorpio introduced us being stuck a lot in the sticky, stickiness of things. Do you want to be stuck there or do you want to get out of that stickiness and be free to make more powerful, um, truer bonds with people and things and with yourself? Um, so, yeah, put your hands more into the cutting out and killing of those demons and, and healing as well as a huge thing. Mercury, Hermes wants you to continue healing yourself and wants a lot of us, from the 11th especially, more intensely, wants a lot of us to put our hands to books and websites and resources and even people, conversations with people about self-care, about dealing with trauma, about um, pain, about how to get out of toxicity, manipulation, all these things. Mercury is making us tick a bit more in the mind and, and, and get those books, those resources, and find those links so that we can get out actually of those things that, that are kind of always on our mind, but it's often hard for us to translate what's on our mind to our hands spiritually, like to actually do something about the mess in our heads, right? <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, FM. I do hope to get more subscribers over time. Um, all I can do is keep doing what I do and hope that you, if you have friends into astrology, especially if you've got a Scorpio friend, relative partner, share this video, let people know about me. Um, and if they like me, then they'll also subscribe, subscribe like you have. Um, thank you very much. Um, I will, as long as I'm alive and healthy, I'll continue doing it. Thank you. <laughs> And I'm very happy for all the hinsters who drop by uh, and leave comments and, and, and support. It's really nice. Um, and I like these streams, by the way. Let me know if you prefer the streams to like my videos, because I'm still kind of deciding if I'm going to stick with this sort of more spontaneous approach um, or if I'm just going to do the, you know, the plan, record and really edit and then convert and upload kind of malarkey. <laughs> um so yeah healing you know Hermes and Scorpio is gonna want to put our minds more on our healing and the healing of others as well of course and the healing of those bonds um so introducing a more soothing salve to these bonds that we are in or that we're about to get in um <laughs> thank you very much you two Gemini's <laughs> 
Yes, both are good, right? <laughs> but to be honest, um, if I get busier after this month um, with other jobs and things, it might be that I have to stick more with these streams because I quite like them. They just, um, they mean that I, I don't have to spend that much time editing and, and waiting. The only issue with the streams I find is once the live stream is over, mm, for some reason, I guess because it's converting or processing, but for some reason, people who couldn't catch the live, they can't get it um, until way after the fact. It comes like way later. So, mm, oh my God, I'm waiting for Master to go direct as well, right? Um, so I don't know what to do about that. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what to do about that. I'm not very like YouTube savvy at the moment, but that's the only kind of drawback I think of these uh, streams because I love them. Otherwise I can interact with you live and that's great, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, healing. Hermes within Free Scorpio wants you to focus on the healing. And, and continue to focus on getting better, especially once the sun uh, hits Sagittarius. Okay, remember the value of all you have been doing for yourself in Libra and Scorpio season, especially Scorpio season, right? Um, and Mercury is going to be that reminder for us to heal. And finally, what I want to say about this Mercury and Scorpio uh, transit is that Mercury... Hermes is playing little tricks on us, especially there's going to be some really significant um, transits to Uranus. So check out my November 2020 astrology video for more on that. But And also look at what Uranus is doing for the rest of Scorpio season. Um, because this Mercury and Uranus and the moon and Uranus thing that's going on is preparing us for big freedom. Oh yes, big freedom is on its way, especially once the Sag season comes. Guns are gonna be blazing, spiritually speaking, and uh, the doors are gonna be burst open and freedom is high on the agenda. And that can mean a million different things for uh, all of us, right? It can mean uh, breaking up necessarily. It can mean breaking out of a job or a group that was just way too it's way too past your evolution. Like, um, it can mean lots and lots of different things, but freedom is on its way. And please then let Hermes show you how to keep doing this deep um, tidy up work and this deep purging work and this true work that is still remaining in your psyche and still remaining close to your fears and your inhibitions and your grudges and the, all the kind of nastiness and stickiness emotionally, Mercury is keeping you there for a little bit so that we, we can be really, really ready for the freedom that's coming once the sun hits Sagittarius. And I'm very excited for Sagittarius season. It is honestly my favorite season of the astral year. I love it. But Sag season can be extremely messy <laughs> if we haven't done the Scorpio season work. So just keep that also in your minds and hearts. Alrighty. And that's kind of all I had um, for this Hoi Hermes um, episode. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the Monday moon day and start to the week. Tuesday due day is going to be when the week kicks off, right? Mm, I'm going to be back when's my next topic let me think hopefully i'm gonna actually do a special sort of tarot um sort of signs for all the signs stream um later this week so look out for that it's going to be really fun it's going to be live as well and then the next sort of more astrological thing i'm doing is going to be mars going direct so towards the end of the week uh, do look out for that. Um, do tune in if you can. Catch us on the live where we're going to be talking about Mars going direct finally in Aries. Ooh, why is Sag my favorite season? Okay. I love Sag season because that's actually the season when I got into astrology. Sag season. Um, and it was a, a very meaningful moment for me. Um, and I love the the high optimism that Sag season can provide for you 
and the big boost it can give you in your convictions and in your sense of direction. In life, Sag season, especially for those who live in the Northern Hemisphere, Sag season is so important uh, because it's the last fire sign season of the year and it provides us with <laughs> the sort of Costa latte, lattes. It provides spiritually, it provides us with those lattes that we need. It provides us with the crackle of the warm, hot, exciting fire that we need to get us through winter in the Northern Hemisphere. But for everyone on earth, it's getting us through the spiritual winter, which is only going to get darker once Capricorn season comes. Um, and so that's why I love Sagittarius season, because it, even though things are bleak, even though there's a lot of naysayers in Sag season and there's a lot of politics in Sag season, um, it, if we're doing it right, Sag season gives us so much hope and belief in ourselves and belief in, for example, our personal politics or our personal spirituality or our personal just love for our freedom and for everyone else's freedom. Sag season teaches you so much about freedom as well. That's a huge key word. Um, Good morning to you, Alberta. Uh, we, we are just ending, um, but thank you for dropping by, Alberta. Later, when this video comes back, um, you can check it out and watch it all back already. Um, so thank you very much for tuning in, and thank you if you watch this later. I want you to let me know um, if you have anything also in Scorpio, in your birth chart, um, and let me know the degree that you have it in Scorpio. Um, because Mercury is about to, from the 11th of November, it's about to kiss all of your natal Scorpio placements. So that's very, very exciting. Uh, let me know in the comments and let's talk about it. Let's talk about the conversation Mercury is going to have for you this Scorpio season. Already, I love you very, very much. Have a fab fabulous, fantastic rest of the Monday, Monday, and see you next time. Mwah. Love you all. Take care.